For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. That's Job 33:14. This has become one of my life verse these last 20 years, um, definitely the last 18 years for sure. Um, the Lord speaks to me in dreams um, so much, even right before I came um, into a relationship with him as a born-again believer in Christ in September of 1998. Um, he would give me dreams after dreams, you know, with the same theme um, to warn me of um, um, the destruction to come if I continue on the same path. Um, that's how he showed me right before I came to Christ. Um, for two consecutive weeks, he gave me the same types of dreams, same theme. And um, finally, uh, two weeks after those dreams, um, it had become a reality. And he set me free in his presence, in his glorious lights. He set me free from all of those demons that had been... Um, sent to steal, kill, and destroy, to oppress, suppress, and um, cause so much pain and torment in my life um, for the first 25 years of my life. Um, so anyways, last night I had a, a dream, um, and it's a warning dream. And since I know that I'm not the only one on this planet that's going through these types of um, battles, um, I feel strongly that the Lord is wanting me to share a part of this dream and then share his word and exhort us together, um, not only to pray for one another, but to exhort us to submit to him and seek him, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. Um, I believe he gave me a warning, warning dream um, of what's to come. And there is, um, I'll just share a part of the dream real quick um, because it's not the focus of this video. The focus of the video is to exhort each one of us to put our whole armor, the armor of God, so that we can stand. Um, so I'll share a little bit of the dream. Um, the dream was about lust, seduction, deception, and possibly betrayal. Uh, yeah, those are pretty... Um, startling things. Um, I dreamt of a very long, large uh, snake. The color of the snake was um, dark yellowish with some brown, mainly dark yellow, like a mustard color. And it, it was about 13 feet was what I heard in my spirit. And the size of the body was about the size of my arm. So I'm a, a petite person. Um, and it was slowly moving, so very slow that I could hardly tell that it was moving at all. But I had to look really closely to see that it was indeed moving very subtly, slowly. I want to say it um, went across my bedroom floor and then it, um, you know, was on my bed. And then... Um, in real life, if I had seen a snake of any size, whether it's a foot or two feet, I'm out of there. But um, in this dream, I was just watching it to see um, if it was real, and then I found out it was. And then something told me to go um, step on the portion of um, the snake where it's closest to the head. And, you know, and I stepped on the back of the snake that's closest to the head, and I moved my right foot towards the head to step it, to crush it. And all of a sudden I have this uh, silver blade. It's like a, a butcher knife blade without the handle. Don't know where it came from, but it was just there. And I began to chop the head of the snake. And um, it wasn't completely severed. And then a voice told me, you need to sever the head off completely. Make sure that it's not connected, the throat, 
is not connected, it could come back and um, um, cause harm to you. So you need to sever the head completely. So I went back and chopped the head off completely. So now the snake, um, the snake head in the body is completely severed and is dead. And um, there were other parts to the dreams um, that um, told me that there were lust involved, the spirit of lust, um, deceptions, and possibly uh, betrayal. But I believe what brought this upon is um, Monday, I was having a really uh, low day. I felt a little lost and lonely because I miss my husband. He's um, in Japan and and he's, um, you know, deployed. He's, he's in the army and he's deployed. And normally I stay um, pretty high in the spirit, you know, I'm, uh, I, I have that perfect peace of Christ that rules my heart and joy and um, contentment and peace, although, you know, I miss him from time to time, but Monday I just had a really low point where I felt lost and I was thinking about Japan, how far it is in January when he would be able to come and visit us for a couple weeks, and I just felt this um, hopelessness and loneliness like oh, like weak and plus I was super achy you know physically I was super achy super weary super tired and um, just felt like defeated and I just laid on my couch and read my bible and read um, my poem of love and uh, listened to some worship music and just enjoying the um, peace and quietness in my home because my sons were all in school but it was that in that lowly point um, emotionally in my life I believe anytime I feel low lost or lonely missing him I feel vulnerable that's when usually I would have these types of dreams um, I don't understand the messages of it all I just know that the enemy is up to something to hurt me to hurt my marriage to destroy my relationship you know my home in my family so I know that he is um, relentless in destroying God's people God's creation and it's not just about me I know that if you're breathing and alive and you're listening to this you also have um, some storms some battles some warfare that you're also are going to be facing if it's not today, it's tomorrow or next week. Everybody's got some type of warfare uh, in the spiritual realms that we cannot see. So I believe the snake and um, uh, things like that in the dreams are just symbols of what's happening in the spiritual realm. And I don't have time to cover meanings um, of everything, but I wanted to bring the Word of God to you, to me, um, so that we can chew on it because the Word of God is our weapon, uh, our strength to withstand the wiles of the enemy. So I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 uh, through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And that dream is the fiery darts of the wicked one against me, towards me, and my family, and my marriage. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, Spirit of God, capital S, I love it, 
which is the word of God, and the word of God is spirit. Hallelujah. There's life, there's power in the word of God. And that's why I'm reading the word of God to you right now, because uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. We need the word of God because it is spirit. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, capital S, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. This is why it's imperative that we pray in the Spirit, you know. Um, I know some people call it uh, foolishness, a uh, foolish utterance, but it is a spiritual language, a gift for warfare, and it is straight from us directly to the throne of God. And if you don't believe that, then I can't help you. You have to go to the Lord and uh, repent of your unbelief. And if you want the gift, you can go to him and ask him and he will give you the gift. But he won't give you the gift if you disqualify it and call it a fraud when it's actually it's a beautiful, wonderful, powerful gift from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus Christ, from the Father, the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues are for believers. And uh, anyways, I don't have time to get into that. But if you do have your spiritual language, please use it. I, I promise you that it will help you to be more sensitive to the things of the Spirit, to hear the voice of God more clearly, to connect and stay connected in the presence of the Lord so that he says that my sheep hears my voice, my sheep knows my voice, and they hear my voice, and the voice of another they will not follow, you know. And the more we pray in the Spirit, the more connected we are and in tune with the Spirit of God because he channels his revelation, his mystery, his secrets um, to his children, you know, via uh, dreams, via the Word of God, via our spiritual language, you know, as is abiding, is abiding in the most high, in the secret place of the most high. So I just want to encourage you to use it and don't let others rob you by telling you that it's of the devil and it's uh, not for us today. Those are all lies from the enemy. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, and I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So that's Ephesians chapter 6, powerful. And I believe it's very timely with uh, the day that we're living in and especially with the dream that the Lord um, had given me last night about this uh, demonic snake, um, you know, trying to subtly slither in um, without me noticing. But anyways, the thing is... Um, the message, whoever that person was in the dream, I believe it was the Holy Spirit who told me, sever the head, make sure you sever the head, you know, sever the head of um, the spirit of lust, sever the head of um, that, that loneliness, you know, that caused me to feel hopeless or vulnerable, um, just sever the head and, and, pr and praying continually, praying in the spirit without a uh, ceasing. Now, also, I'm going to share with you a few beautiful scriptures. So I can't speak scriptures <laughs> that will help us um, to stand in the power of God and the truth and power of God. Um, and this is about lust. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And um, I forgot what scriptures is in when Jesus said, it was in Matthew for sure, um, Verily, verily, I say unto you, not everyone that um, um, says to me, um, Lord, Lord, um, I'm going to try to find that. It's in Matthew. Have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, um, this and that and the other? And the Lord Jesus said, um, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Um, the Lord Jesus said that 
Not everyone will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do with the will of my Father will enter heaven. So, anyways, I can't find that scriptures. It's in um, Matthew and many other places as well. But let me keep going. So, this scripture, 1 John 2, um, 16 to 17. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, today, if you're um, pursuing the lust of the flesh, um, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. These are everything of this world that we desire, whether it be sex or money, title, fame, status, fortune, whatever it is that um, this world has to offer. If we're pursuing that and not doing the will of God, we will not abide forever, um, not in the presence of God and not in the kingdom of God. As we know, we will all die um, one day. Um, the question is, where will we spend our eternity? If it would be in heaven with God Almighty, or if it would be in hell with the devil. Um, so please, please, please take that to heart. Um, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's Matthew 5, 27, 28. So God doesn't just look at the things that we do or don't do. He looks at our hearts. If we've already committed sin in our heart, that's already sinned against him. And we have to confess our sin and repent and stop uh, repeating that sin. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 2 Peter 1 through 4. This is one of my favorite scriptures right here. It is these scriptures that helps me to stand and keeps me out of the pit. And, um, it's James 4, 7 through 8. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. That's the first thing. Submit yourself therefore to God. That's one. Resist the devil. That's two. And he will flee from you. One, two, three. Uh, so submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. If there isn't submission to God, you can forget about step two and step three because... You will not have power. We will not have power to overcome the devil. We will not have power to resist the devil apart from submitting ourselves, our thoughts, our heart, our desires, our purpose, our plans, everything about our lives, every aspect of our being, our very breath. If we do not submit ourselves, our being to God first, we can rest assured we cannot have the power, we will not have the power to resist the devil, and the devil will not flee. So the first and foremost critical part is part one, submit yourselves to God first. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from flesh, fleshy lust, which war against the soul, 1 Peter 2, 11. You know, Monday when I was feeling really low, uh, my flesh was crying out. I wanted my husband. I wanted him home. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. My gosh, it's so far away. You know, I I was very tempted to just like um, throw myself a little pity party. I want my husband and I, just like a little child, I want candy. I want now. You know, I don't want to wait. Um and I have to remind myself that I am a stranger in this world. This is not my home. Nothing in this world is um, eternal except for the souls of mankind. And this life is not my own. You know, I live in Christ and Christ lives in me. And um, I have to continually focus my heart, my thoughts, 
on Christ because he is my only solid rock. He is my very purpose of existence. He's my strength, my joy, my peace, my rock, my salvation. And he hides me in his love. He hides my husband and I in his love and my family. He hides us in his love. He carry us through from deployment to deployment. And um, so abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1, 14 to 16 No one can be holy apart from the Holy Spirit of God dwelling inside of our hearts. No one. It doesn't matter how hard we try. You know, our goodness is as filthy rags apart from the Holy Spirit of God. That's why we must be born again of the Spirit of God. Because apart from the Spirit of God, we are flesh. And there's nothing good in our flesh. It is the Spirit of God alone that empowers us to live a righteous life that pleases Him. It's through Him alone. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Galatians 5.24 Again, they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh. In Christ means to be in Jesus Christ, means to have His Holy Spirit indwelling in us. These are newborn believers, uh, born again believers with the Spirit of God in them. They are in Christ and they're in His Word. One with the Spirit, one in His Word. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Yield not to temptations. Uh, Horatio R. Palmer, that was a poem by Mr. Palmer. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasure, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which ye have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, that's the Holy Spirit regenerating our spirit, our heart, our thoughts, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Again, we need the Holy Ghost. We can't do this apart from Him. Don't even try it. We will fail miserably. We need the Holy Ghost. You must be born again with the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus said, to enter the kingdom of God, to have power over the kingdom of darkness. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus 2, 11 through 12. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord Jesus out of a pure heart. 2 Timothy 2, 22. Flee. Run as quickly as you can. Don't entertain it. Don't justify it. Flee. Run. Decapitate that demon head. Decapitate the lust. You know, sever it immediately. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead in, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. And that's uh, Romans 6, 11 through 12 and 14. I just want to point out that God's grace is his living power alive in all true born again believers with the Holy Spirit in them. It is not a lifeless, powerless package of, you know, a gift. It is fully alive. Grace gives us power, empowers us to overcome all things. And grace is not a license to freely sin. As some, um, 
as many Christians believe, you know, we're under grace. And, um, you know, Jesus already took all of our sins on that cross. He surely did. And when we repent of our sins and we believe in him, he gives us his Holy Spirit, which is that empowering grace in us to overcome our sins, not a license to freely sin against him and trample on his blood, as Hebrews uh, speaks about. And um, oh, last but not least, I encourage you, exhort you, plead with you that um, if you have friends, families, you know, with uh, spouses that are far away, like mine, that's all the way on the other side of the planet, please continue to pray for them night, morning, day, afternoon, pray for them, plead the blood of Jesus over them. Because the enemy is relentless in trying to bring all kinds of um, deceptions and, um, you know, temptation, anything and everything, his way, my way, um, to try to destroy our marriage, our family, our testimony of Jesus Christ. So if you're a believer, please pray for military families that are apart for months and years at a time. Pray for their children, pray for their marriage, you know, that the Lord would hide them under the shelter of his wings. And um, please pray for me. And I will pray for you as well. If you have any prayer requests, you know, just leave it under um, your comments and I'll pray for you. Uh, we are called to pray for one another. Let me read this little poem by Miss Helen Steiner Rice. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4 8. Marriage is a sturdy structure designed to provide love and intimacy and companionship companionship throughout our lives. It is more than romance. It is romance plus commitment so that we don't lose our bearings when the feelings ebb and flow. Rejoice in the one God has given you. Dear friend, being true to your spouse is being true to God. He will be pleased by your faithfulness and love. Hebrews 13, 4 says, marriage should be honored by all. This is all I have for you today. Stay alert. Be aware of your surrounding. Pray unceasingly in the spirit. Abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He will lead you, guide you, strengthen you, and put on the full armor of God. Thank you for watching. I love you all and God bless you. Thank you. Until next time.